Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I thank the Lord for today for such an opportunity to be here and to share the word of God with the beautiful men and women of God on this and the ones listening to us. I thank the Lord for this opportunity again. And I'm so grateful that I'm able to be a partaker of this. I thank God for his mercies. I thank God for his grace and his strength that is ever sufficient for us in during times like this. We thank God for what is going on and where we are today. We thank God for the season that we are in. It's a season of greatness. It's a season of showing forth who we are in Christ, showing off the power of God, showing off his healing power, showing mm -hmm. off who he is, he has been in our lives. And I thank God that I'm a particular person. If any opportunity is an opportunity to share the word of God and share his grace and his strength upon our lives and encourage others as we encourage uh, ourselves also. I've been encouraged this morning in so many places. So, but I thank God that I'm able to also contribute. I have one new topic I'm supposed to talk about. My name is Lillian. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Like I was introduced, my name is Lillian. I, uh, Apostle is my mother in the Lord. She introduced me to the Lord back in the years, many, many years ago in college. And I thank God that we are connected again. We've been connected all this while, but she just chose to find me here today. But I thank God for that. Uh, I'm giving a topic on the, as we are talking about Titus, the book of Titus, uh, especially chapter two concerning women and what we're supposed to do as people of God. Uh, actually in the first, uh, in chapter two from verse three, I'm gonna read that. Um, it says the older women, from verse three, the older women likewise, that they be reverent in behavior, not slanderers, not giving too much wine, teachers of good things, that they, that they admonish the young women to love their husbands, to love their children, to discreet, chaste, homemakers, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God may not be blasphemed. My, my topic, the topic I was given was to the first part of it, to be reverent, that they be reverent in behavior. Women to be reverent in the way they live. And uh, teach the women to be reverent in the way they live. And if you look at the, that uh, chapter in verse 5b of that, so that all of these things that the Bible is talking about, so that no one will malign the word of God. That's and right. The other part of it on, in, in verse uh, 10 of the same chapter 2, so that in every way, teaching about our God, our Savior, the teaching of God, the word of God will be attractive to the hearers. Mm. Know that with that the, the portion that women of God, so that the word of God will not be aligned, mm. will not be disrespected. Mm. And to be re reverent, as we know, even a Bible dictionary meaning of reverent is feeling or showing deep or solemn respect, feeling or honor, adoration, worship, admiration, to a person or someone that you uh, admire, someone that you show respect, that's reverent. And then reverent behavior said, teach the other women, let them teach that they may be reverent in behavior, in behavior, our ways, the way we live, what we do, what we see, how we project ourselves, where we are, how, how do people know us? What do they make of us? If somebody crosses your path today, what would they say about you? Are you, in your behavior, are you referencing God? Are you allowing him to show out in your life without even much talking about talking to people? Does your life reflect, reflect that? Does he say that about you, about your devotion to God? So I will look at it in, in reverence in our life, the way we live. The Bible makes us understand that God has called us unto holiness. God himself is holy. Mm. He said, be you holy for I am holy. 
He has called us. That's the main purpose of God saving us, to be holy as he is holy. I'll have a uh, read this scripture in, in Luke chapter 1, 74, 75. It said that he will grant us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemy by serving without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. Ephesians 4, 24 says that you put on a new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. And true holiness before God. So that no one will malign the word of God. And when mm. God talks about holiness, it's an act. It's something that he said, be you holy for I am holy. It's an act of worship unto him. Remember, referencing to God is act of showing deep and solemn respect of who you believe in. That's in this case, God. We honor him, we adore him, worship him, ad admire him in our ways of living, behavior. In our ways of living, out of showing respect. Out of showing respect to someone, to, to God, this God that we believe in. And if we have to do this, all that we has called us to become. He said, "You be you holy for I am holy. Holiness encompasses a, all, a lot of so many things in our lives. And that's who we are. As we leave all these different aspects of the things that I'm going to, it's all encompasses in this holiness of living a life unto God. He is holy and he wants us to be holy. There's no two ways about it. And if you look at it, he said, God in this Luke verse, um, chapter 1, 74, 75, he said, being delivered out of the enemies might serve him without fear. He has delivered us out of our enemies, out of the enemies, out of our ways, and to, so that we can serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our lives. He has given us that power to live as godly people. All that pertains to godliness and life, God has given it to us so that we can live this life for him. Ephesians, I'm going back to that, Ephesians 4, 24. Put on the new man, which God is greater in righteousness and true holiness. Put on is an act. Is that you're not expecting God to do it for you. He has given you that power to do that. I know that it's not by power, it's not by mind, but by the spirit of God that we live. We actually depend on him. But you have to do what he has asked you to do. It's a step forward and you go forward in so many aspects of our lives that we're living uh, for God. And then another part of this is in Peter, in First Peter, verse 1, 14. It said, I'm going to read, that's the, the part B of that, 14 and 15. But as he which has called you is holy, so be you holy in all manner of conversation. Because it's written, be you holy for I am holy. So revealing our life in God in the way that we live is becoming being holy unto God. And then one of the ways that we be holy in our dev devotion to God, our passion for God, devotion, passion for God, and a, our a daily encounter with Him. Devotion for Him is our, our spending time with God, either in prayer and the Word of God, allowing the Word of God to dwell richly inside of us so that this lifestyle of God can be made manifest in our lives. If you don't know what you believe in, how to navigate it, I don't know what you, how you're going to live it. So the word of God, which is our watch word, which is what we live by, is a standard, is a yardstick that we have to depend on to be able to live a holy lifestyle for God. The blueprints are there for us to follow how to live a holy life unto God. That's when we're devotion and passion for God, passionately worshiping God. Romans 12, we know that Romans 12, 1 to 2 says... Um, Romans 2, it says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is a reasonable service, and do not conform to this word, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Passion for God. Renew a mind. That is the word of God. And a daily coming in prayer with God growing from strength to strength, learning how to live for God begins from our devotion with Him. Devotion in prayer, devotion in, uh, in reading the Word of God and allowing the Word of God to actually help us to live. 
The second part I will talk about is being different, set apart. Set apart in purity and behavior and thought. As we continue to live, uh, spend time with God and allow the word of God to help us. Allow the word of God to richly dwell in us and help us to live the, navigate the lifestyle God has brought us to. Being different, set apart in purity, behavior, thought process. First Peter 1, First Peter 2, 9 says that we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, called out, set apart, set apart. First Peter 2, set apart. We are called out of darkness into his marvelous light. Set apart, set apart to live a holy life. We read that scripture, I'm not going to read it. Set apart to live a holy life unto God. Second Corinthians 7, 1 said, Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. That's part of setting apart in purity. If you see that, we say, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of flesh and spirit. As we allow the word of God, in our lives as we practice the, what we hear what we read what the spirit of god helps us to understand all these other things around us will be removed by the word of god that we have the word of god is powerful that's able to do that as we commit to it as we allow it as we allow it to make a difference in our lives and these are the things that god wants us to do we men be river in the way that you live set apart Set apart in purity and behavior in every area of your life. As people see you, they see a difference. That you're a child of God, that you're a woman of God, that you're a mother of God, that you can make, that your lifestyle should show forth something that people don't have. You should be attracted to people as they see you. You should be attracted as people see you. We focus on sacred things, things that are of God, things that are pure, things that are holy, things that can make a difference in people's life. Another aspect of this is uh, <clears throat> in uh, a devotion to God and trying and actually living a holy life. I talked about devotion, talked about being different. And also being different in keeping decency as women of God. Remember, teach the younger ones. Being decency in the way we dress, in looks, in gestures, in the way we dress, teaching the younger ones. In the way we dress, in the, what we do. In 1 Timothy 2, 9, it says, In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefaithness, sobriety, not with braided hair and gold. We can go on and go and say braided hair. Modesty actually is, depends on where you are. And... and um, what you can afford, let me put it that way. And, and uh, but the main purpose in all this, adorning yourself, not because what is your purpose of doing what you're doing in your dressing? What are you doing? What is this supposed to do? Is this supposed to reflect who you are? Is it supposed to reflect God in you? Does it supposed to reflect your affluence or your, however that is? But it's supposed to reflect God in everything you do. We are living in these days now that we cannot, it's so much impossible to differentiate who says I am of God and who says I'm not of God. People come in with party spirit in the church, all sorts of ways, dressing anyhow. Women in particular, of course, we're talking about women. And then you, the older one, or the one that is uh, maybe in a, present in a place of leadership, what do you do? What do you tell them? Are they copying from what you do? Are they copying from your lifestyle? Are they looking for what you, they see what you do and they say it's okay? Some of them don't even know that they're supposed to dress this way because none of them have been taught anymore. We're living in this party-free lifestyle. All we did to preach and we say, okay, God is, God is good. He has given us this, uh, all the prosperity that we want. Yes, those, are, this, this, those things are true. What are you doing with what you have? Are you there to build up? Are you there to scatter? Are you there to just uh, 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 direct, misdirect people or make people look in different directions of what, and, and just confuse, confuse people or distract people? What is it that you have? 
that you're bringing to the table, that you're bringing to show, that you're bringing to people, that you're bringing to women, that when they see you, they say, okay, character, do, do decency in what they looks, your gestures, and also how you talk in spirit. The Bible makes us, Colossians 4 says, let your word be seasoned with salt. Let Ephesians 4, 29, let no unwholesome talk come out of your mouth. Taming our tongue, slow to speak. Let the words that come out of your mouth be seasoned with salt. Let it minister grace to the hearers. Let it minister healing. Let it minister comfort to the hearers. What about our speeches? Do we say because we have authority, we have a place in leadership, we can stand there and say whatever we want to say. What are people hearing from you? Living a holy life. Is all is encompassed is almost everything about us. That's that's who we are in Christ, living a life worthy of honor, and teaching the other women, younger ones, the pastors, the bishops, apostles. What do they say about you when you climb up there? After that, in your lifestyle at home, what do you do with your husband, with your children? Are they looking at you? Say, oh God, I cannot do this. <clears throat> I cannot do that. I look at my, my children. I even, I thank God for the lockdown. The lockdown really showed who we are, where we are, where we're going. At least we can be locked down for a second with our husbands, for our, with our children. And let them lock down 24 hours. Nobody moves. Nobody, you are looking at each other. And it's like, who are you? Where, are, where did you come from? What's going on with you? And you talk, everybody say, no, I'm not going to do that. I had conversation with my children. And it, when, even when we want to pray, everybody say, mom, we have a different way of praying. We can't pray like this because they are, they're living by themselves. And they say, no, we have to set up a time. I'm doing this at this particular time. And I'm looking at myself, what have I done? Okay, and then we have to like have real conversation about, okay, where are we going? I know this doesn't matter. I know this doesn't matter, but what is God talking about? What is God saying about these issues in our life? What is it? We talked about so many things, dressing, even her hair. The, 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 my boys, the, some, one of them said, Mom, I want to put a dreadlock. So they're what? It doesn't matter, Mom. Dreadlock is regular. It doesn't matter. Piercing ears and piercing all that, all that. And I said, oh, my God. And looking at, okay, she asked, I'm not talking about all these things. Let's just focus. Let's just come to one place. What does he do for you? Is he going to help you? Can somebody else see you and say, yes, you're a child of God. Can you minister to people what, regarding what you're doing? You wear a mini skirt or you are half naked. If you say Jesus loves you, what would they say to you? Let me tell you. What would they say? I know you're telling me here that it doesn't matter. It matters from your heart and whatever. If your, my heart is more important than every other thing. What is that telling you? How are people perceiving you? And remember, love covers the multitude of sin. Just for the love of Christ in you, if you know that the Bible talks about that too, if you know that you're doing this and it will cause your brother to fall, why don't you live in the name of love? Submit to that. I know you don't like it. You don't want that way. But because of this person, he will fall from looking at you. You will fall from saying, after all, you do this. So for the sake of love of God, so that we can have people, we can draw men to God. Can allow people to enter the kingdom of God and stay there. So whatever it takes, women of God, pastors, bishops, do what it takes to actually reference God. The whole purpose of this that the word of God will not be maligned, may not be changed, will not be mocked, will not be will not be sidetracked, will not be said, oh, we, these people, that's who you are. We don't see it in you. We don't see. We don't know what you're talking about. It does not reflect in what you believe in. In your with your business partners, what do they say about you? What do they say? They, would they say, Yes, I, I am, I, you know, I encountered a woman of God, I encountered a man of God, I encountered this person. He showed me love. He showed me some people even prefer Muslims than Christians these days because they say they are compassionate, they love you. If you ask them anything, they give you, and it's true. I've encountered that. So people prefer gay people. I have encountered gay, gay people, I have them as co workers, they're the nicest people on earth. They, compared to your Christian that will just be jealous about you, be, or, or be even talking against you in front of them, but you're calling her a Christian sister, a Christian brother, a Christian, all that we are doing, and yet our lifestyle does not show that. Some people say, I prefer this man, and he, this is a gay man that we all condemn. His lifestyle is so different. He can take you in, encourage you, talk to you. My fellow sister will not talk to me because I'm better or she's better or I'm going somewhere she's not going. 
have something to say, sister, help me with this. They will not. They have that knowledge. They want to do, they can do that for you, but they will not because of envy, jealousy, and what are we doing? So just imagine that God is calling us onto holiness, the very onset of what he has planned for our lives, to live a distant life, reverence, reverent behavior that pleases God, that allows people to see us, that allows people to see God in us. We have to use, take this in the church, allowing ourselves to glorify God, inspiring others to godly principles. Like I said, in our homes, before our husbands, our family members, our children, co-workers, places of God, in the church, allowing our life, ourselves to glorify God. And in the church particular, as we, we talk about church people, there's so many, uh, this lockdown has shown me so much that people, they don't care about church. They said, no, you are joking. Your mom, I can do this by myself. Oh, sister, don't worry about it. All these pastors, all these people. And when you dig deeper, those things are true. What they're saying is true. So who are we deceiving? What are we doing? What are we doing? We, we just need to say, God, forgive me where I have gone wrong, where I have placed myself, where I shouldn't have placed myself. Even, 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 if, even if when we see them, like I'm talking about church, and I want to see this younger generation doing what they do. They have, they have reason for doing. They are resisting us so much. They're resisting us, the, the older ones. They say, I'm not going to do what my parents are doing. When you dig deeper, those things that are true, because the parents are not transparent in what they're doing. They're not open. They're not open to the, they say, okay, all I've known is let's go to church. By this time, we're going to church. By this time, we're coming back. By this time, we are having dinner. And, and that's set up for them. They are tired of that. My children, if I'm not telling anything, my children are tired of that. They want to see real lifestyle. They want to see, mom, you can, you can make a boo boo today. I'm, I'm sorry if I use the wrong word. Yes, but I, I, oh, it's, all, it's okay. And they'll say, mom, mom will tell me, it's okay. I can, I, it's okay. I, 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 it's like, I, let me apologize. I did wrong today. I'm so sorry for what I did. I shouldn't have done that, but let, just forgive me. And let's ask God to forgive us of what we have done today. And we continue okay. again because they now know that I can fail. I can, I cannot, I can fail. I can, I can, I, I can do anything that they said that are out there that everybody else is doing. They know that, but they can also say, mom can be repentant of this and ask God for forgiveness. If mom can do this, I can do this. And I want to worship this, my God, the God my mother worships. So that's the way we, we have to come down to level of all sorts of level, level I have to ask God to help us to live a God. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah.